Let's do a mare duel. By J2TK. Chapter 4. The New Law and Order. It was half past midnight when Pinkie Pie returned to Plainville. Three weeks seemed like such a short time, but so it was as Akara said how long she was out. The first thing she had to do before heading to Secret Cube Corner was pick up her mare duel outfit from Rarity. It would have been all passed up by now, and a good idea to wear it now. Her had to try to find excuses as to why she was carrying a strange box with her at night. On her back was a small sack of items she was now going to use in her rounds when it came to finding foes. Before she left the hut, Piggy asked Akora if she had any items that could help her out in her fight against crime. The ever resourceful zebra mentioned that she had something that may aid her and gave her two different types of pellets that could produce different effects. One type created a blinding, odorless smoke and the other a powerful sleeping gas. Both she used to blind or stun predecessors for a great, quick getaway, back to her hut. While the smoke screen bomb pellets were plentiful, the sleeping gas was made from a rare plant in Everfree, and many such flowers would have to be used to create enough power for a single pellet. Other such powders and mixtures would, she would have ready in due time, so all she could give were these two items. While she's in her bag, Sakura was pinky good luck on her quest for the right. Pinky's first stop on arrival was Carousel Boutique, which was closed at the time. Knocking on the door softly, Rarity was soon answered the door and was elated to see her up and about. As expected, she did give her mare well costume all mended and repaired, along with a new hat to replace the one she lost in the wreck. Pinky then asked if she had something she could use to place her new tools as luck would have it. Rarity showed her a small set of saddlebags that would go a test and last around her waist. Vassanisa explained that this was made for her possible Mirdewell costume, because it looked good to accessorize. Instead, she kept it around after all the hard work she did, and now thankfully it was going to be put to use. Right then and there, Pinkie Pie excused herself to one of Rarity's dressing closets and quickly got into the outfit. Soon, Mirdewell came out, ready to go back in action. Lighting the smoke screen and sleeping gas pellets in two separate pockets, they glancing the utility saddlebags on. She was finally ready to go back to home base. As she left, Meredithwell could swear she saw an extra set of locks at the boutique door. As she jumped from rooftop to rooftop, she once again saw sniffs and snails at the once condemned house lot, and decided to put her new toys to work, passing her first test with flying colors. She jumped back down at grab level, she quickly put up the boys, and back to her respective homes to lay her call it a night. At least, that's what she thought, until she heard the low hum of a magic aura being turned on, along with a rough shout of FREEZE! Meredithwell turned around, and her eyes opened wide at a looking at the curious newcomer. The unicorn wore a dark blue per jacket with a white formal shirt underneath, and a black tie on his neck. Right atop his horn is a simple dark blue cap with a black trim topped in the center with a shiny yellow badge with the initials PVBPD on it. His dark indigo eyes looked at her sternly, as his horn lit with a pale brown aura to offset his dark tan coat and platinum silver mane and tail. His flanks were adorned with a cutie mark of a dozen's gavel. <laughs> Looks like I cut myself a full napper. Put the young ones down, let down the ground, and extend your hooves. I do mean all four of them, he barked at her. Better well can't understand what is happening to her. Who is a stranger, and does he really think he's a full napper? And then forever, she wished she could break rule one and explain herself. <laughs> Before she is able to, another figure runs up to him and gasps. Yet another unicorn, dressed in the same uniform as the first. However, this was a filly with a bright green coat, jerry red mane and tail with white hand lights, rose hues dyes, key mark of a pair of lollipops colored red and white are on a flank. Officer Booker, hold your fire! She pleased as he stepped closer. Can't you see? This is Meredithwell! She then gives her a friendly smile. How are you? Well, we haven't seen you here in Ponyville for a while now. Booker arched his eyebrow as magic aura dissipated. Meredithwell! That means you're the mask hero you folks here in Ponyville been talking about all this time. Officer Peppermint Pops? The candy unicorn nods. What is say? Listen, Meredithwell. We don't know what you're doing with these snips, snails. Ugh! Did these two break their mandatory cur curfew again? Meredithwell knows peppermint pots from many parties her other self had made with her invited in the past. But the other one, the one she calls Booker, 
is a complete stranger to her. Did he arrive during the three-week absence? Susan tells her she needs to find out what had happened during the time, and only Twilight Sparkle can help. Nevertheless, she had to get home and let the cakes know she is alright. Was it here, Miss Meredwell? We here at the Ponyville Police Department have made it our sworn duty to investigate and solve crimes, as well as apprehend and incarcerate felons and lawbreakers within the jurisdiction of Ponyville and all points closed. Booker informed her. Well, we appreciate the gender. It's our duty to take these cults home and to their families, so they are properly punished there. With those words, Booker used his magic to lift snips and snails off of Mary Wells' back and place eats on his and Peppermint's back. And suddenly, a loud sound of stag was heard in the air. Meduel's eyes landed on a small device, placed it on Peppermint's sa shoulder, with a cream coat mare tapped with her once with her hoof. A cracked voice had spoken out against the machine. <coughs> Officer 12, status report. Over. Peppermint had directed her voice to the gadget. Officer 12, Peppermint Pops, reporting. We just apprehended two offenders who broke mandatory curfew. Names are Snips and Snails. Also reporting, we encountered Ponyfield National Hero, Mayor Duell. Hero captured the offenders when we arrived and is turning zero sixty to us. Over. The stag began to crack once more, and the voice returns. Copy that. Welcome, Mayor Duell, from all of us here at the station. Return to your patrol. Over and out. Booker rolled his eyes. I don't understand you Ponyville ponies one bit. Back in San Francisco. San Francisco! We didn't have many vigilantes to keep the peace. The least ponies were all we needed. The tan unicorn, however, looked at Mayor Duell as she saw him an angry scowl. No offense, ma'am. The native Ponyvillian, however, shows more happiness. I don't know where you were, Mayor Duell, but I guess most of us are here glad you inspired us. When the police department first came, many of us signed on the spot, hoping we could make a difference in other lives, just like you did. That's why I think you could, on the behalf of all Ponyville bone officers like me, please keep up the good work, and we'll see each other around. Meredwell's expression changed to one of comfort, hearing those words of encouragement. She indeed helps make a difference, and will never stop. The mere thought of that gave her a warm, fuzzy feeling beneath her outfit. Pepperman pops and tapped the side of her cap, and saluted his bugger once more. They made their exit. Meredwell ponders the sudden turn of events. There's now a police department in Ponyville. During all her time here, she found Ponyville being so safe that everyone could sleep without fear or worry. This is what happened here that now requires police presence. These and other answers she would soon get soon enough from Twilight after she gets to sleep back at Chicken Cube Corner. Sleep, however, becomes the last thing on her mind when her eyes open wide and Chicken Cube Corner is open for business? At half past one in the morning? Instead of seeing the usual assortment of fillies and cults, however, Mary Well sees about a dozen police officers, some other light night revelers, who need to satisfy their sweet tooth. Mary Well furrows her brow. She originally was going to sneak up to her open window, get out of costume, wait till tomorrow to let the cakes know she came in during tonight, so it's not to disturb them. This plan, however, is done for. She begins to pace around the rooftop, until finally, inspiration hits her. Officer Hostat, I agree. A curl red colored unicorn police mare, with a bright curly burnt orange red mane and tail, not sadly, and is the professional companion. The mare was definitely older than most of the rookies in Pontyville, but also one of the commanding officers, judging by the far more elaborate suit jackets she wore, would be pulled into place on the shoulders. Her flanks are emblazoned with a key mark of a perfectly round golden shield, blazing with a set of scales. Despite looking rather rough, her soft, vivid teal eyes denoted friendliness. The senior police mayor resumes. This establishment indeed best at the donut shops back home, with no equal. I don't think I've ever eaten a crueler as crunchy and sweet as all this in all my years of service. The familiar colored Pegasus stallion really blusses as he fixes his cap over his short orange mane with a yellow center. His cutie mark is a fireball with flames swimming from behind. Well, Lieutenant Baker, when you lived here in Plainfield, as much as us locals, you appreciate what you've got, and we would never trade your cuckoo corner for any of those donut shops you tell us about, for all of the bits in Equestria. Quite right, Lieutenant. A great coat er, of point officer, with dark skin and handlebar mustache, mane and teal, with a thick twine right accent, interrupted, I've never in a mean life tasting tastier scones than these made by Mrs. Cake. Tears for Sugar Cube Corner, indeed. Just like that, several patrons, 
above local members of the new police force, in late night customers taking advantage of the 24 hour service, voiced into their agreements for the bakery. Lieutenant Buckler merely takes a sip of her levitated coffee cup and smiles. First, uh, moving from hustle and bustle of Philadelphia to the one of the exchange officers assigned to the new police force in a backwater town like Pineville's beneath her. A week or so later, having met many of the locals and learning that the Princess Celestia's personal disciple currently heads the library, she's grown to think of the little town as a home away from home. Most co most coffee Richard Wardorf? A young bespectacled earth point with a brown, nearly cylindrical cake as a kitty mark sits her a coffee pot in her teeth as he appears to the side of the police mayor. Lieutenant Buckler nods as he grabs the coffee pot with her magic, pours some into the cup, and holds it down for the point to grab it with her teeth again, so she goes back to the corner. That butt cake is quite helpful, isn't she? Well, the thing is, she's not really the cake's regular assistant, Hazat replies. The real assistant in the practice of the cakes is one of the nicest, friendliest, and downright most fun boys you ever meet. Seems she's away at that party excursion she went off to since three weeks ago when that old Coltron house went down. Yeah, she's truly the best. Why, she would have given the entire police department a whole pie they never forget. Another point, Stallion Officer adds in. You haven't had a better party until you experience the Pinkie Pie, Super Duper, Extra Fantabulous, Triple Decker, Terry on Top Mega Party. The police mayor runs her chin with a huff. So, Young Pony Mayor's name is Pinkie Pie, is it? I wonder how she is. Wow! Lieutenant Buckler was startled immediately by a shrill yet cheerful yell. She went to the door and spots an interesting pink earth pony with a fizzy mane and triple balloon kitty mark carrying heavily packed saddlebags. Pulling by a harness, a colorful looking can with a flower and a wheel in the center. Oh, well, 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 I just can't believe you can get corners open right now. But I thought you could get corners closed at night. Is it nighttime or just an eclipse? I remember Princess Celestia accidentally put both sun and moon in the seat spot, and everything was so dark. It was so very spooky. I made a super scary eclipse party, and everyone had lots of fun, and ate cookies, and take puns, and played all sorts of cool games, and told ghostly stories, and. It's Piggy kept jabbering. Lieutenant Bucker maintained an uneasy smile on her face. It does the rest of the non-native officers. I say, Lieutenant, that Philly's got quite to give a gab, wouldn't you agree? The dynamite muses in a whisper. The police mayor was far too confused and amazed at how the point just kept talking and talking without break. When Granny Pie baked us in the wonderful cherry pie, I ate almost two whole pieces, but I was far too sleepy, so I went nightly right there on the plate, and had cherries and jelly goo all over my face and me. So I think i It was fun. Piggy Pie looked around and asked, So? Why is the cute corner open? Hey, Piggy. The glasses wearing pony shouts from around the corner. The barry pony gasps. It shoots off like a rocket. Leaning her saddlebags and cannon harness suspended in the air, only to fall without an owner maintaining a grip. <gasps> Bun cake! How are you? When did you get here? Is everything okay in Meridale? How are you here? Is Gibby okay? I miss him. What? A fusic color pony with a light brown mane tied in twin braids lays a hoof over Pinky in her friend's mouth. Uncle Carrot and Aunt Cotton had me help out while you were on leave to organize the bass over at Vane Day. Well, it's why you need to plan the carnival. What an honor! Piggy gulped without letting Bud Cake or anyone else notice. Just what kind of lie did Twilight cook up? Oh, yeah, then they. <laughs> well, when they eat the best party pudding ever, guess I'm the pudding for the job. Bud fixed their classes at Sue. Anyways, didn't you see all the new ponies here in uniform? Ponyville has its own police department now. Here, Ponyville! And well, since these ponies love their sweets, Uncle Carrie and Aunt Cut decided to keep it open all the time, just for them. But I guess other ponies who want some late-night desserts and are also allowed to come in, too. Piggy arched her brow as he sees the police ponies all wave at her. Well, she says, Oh, that's why they're just like that. <laughs> I thought they were all going to a mask away later on. So <laughs> funny. She then goes out there and gasps, Ooh, wait, did they get an official greeting when they arrived? Bud bit her lips as she tries to talk. Well, uh, you see... No, we didn't, Pinky. Since you're an expert at that. I saw called out. Every native police officer and customer voiced their agreement. Aw, that's not good. 
good? No. Uh, so they must be done. And Piggy Pie is the one to fix it. You know what this calls for? See, Grins insulted every party villain native as the non native officers went out in confusement. Piggy and the all the native side of you said, A PING! With that, the pink pony turns to her party can and jams the button everywhere. Carvel explodes as a confetti. Balloons and party favors shoot out and starts decorating the entire bakery as patrons and Pontyfield blown officers whoop in loud tears. But it looks extremely worried while the non native workers would whatever guessed it. Decided to make the best of it, they joined in on the festivities. The party started to attract more and more patrolling officers. Curious gawkers, as Pinkie Pie insisted they join the party. The pastries were plentiful, music from the photograph was lively, and the guests and officers were all happy to finally unwind. Pinkie got to meet plenty of new ponies, and that made her smile. There was one police pony that Pinkie didn't know to join the rest of the officers. Lieutenant Bucker remained quietly where she was, sipping a cup of coffee as she looked at the revelry without a word. Things expressed it sad, as he wondered why the mayor didn't partake of the celebration. Her mood grew jolly once more, as he decided to greet her personally. Bucker calmly took her time with her coffee, when Piggy decided to poke her head out from the side of the table and let me sigh a speed, causing her to drop the coffee cup loudly on the saucer below her. <coughs> My name's Piggy Pie, who are you? And the pink pony agreed with Pep. <laughs> Pleased to meet you, Piggy Pie. The girl red unicorn replied, I'm Buckler, Lieutenant and Second Command of the Plainfield Police Department. Pleasure finding meeting you. Pinky giggles. <laughs> I didn't know it was that famous, but I'm no sled pony or anything like that. Does a cheerful pony who likes nothing more than to see a smile on every pony's faces? A kick is a vice, and also enough so you get around. But those can hurt if you try to twist your head around to show them. But I hear the spots of a suit ponies who can make all the bones and neck muscles feeling awesome. But it's only because Verity and Fluttershy tell me so because I never really go in there. <gasps> oh, except for that one time when we gave Jerry Berry a surprise party in there. And, wow, she sits so high and I'm going to see you after we go, surprise! It was so much fun. But I guess I should be more careful about the surprise party since my friends wanted to do the thing. It kept me out of it because I actually thought they didn't like my parties and didn't want my friends anymore. Can you believe I actually thought that? And then Buckard gave a little chuckle. <laughs> You're most unusual pony to meet, Miss Pie. There's ponies like you who make Ponyville an interesting place. Oh, I'm just thinking. Miss Pie makes it sound like you want to eat pie, and Mrs. Cake makes it so good as pies I know. Uh, but if you want a true tasty pie, you should go visit Sweet Apple Eaters. Apple Jack and Grace you make the most good as apple pie in the entire world. I just love to eat them. I also like to eat cakes and donuts, cupcakes and muffins, dinguses. Candies, chocolates, ice cream, parfaits, apple fritters, caramel, candy apples, apple brown betty. Piggy just kept naming different sweets and baked goods for an entire five minutes. The tech buckler could only stand there amazed by how much the party pony could talk without pause. All she could do was smile. She was really an interesting pony to listen to indeed. Albeit as he was a bit on the chair box side. Before Piggy could ask why she was there all alone. A shrill whistle was then heard above the noise, which immediately made everyone quiet. Two more Earth Pony officers, a colored filly, appeared and stood on the set of the main floor. Attention! The filly called out, causing the rest of the officers to put their cats back on, scramble to form two orderly lines on the sides of the door. Lieutenant Buckler sighed as he got up and walked to the center of the two lines, standing firm. Pinky looked on in confusion, wondering what had caused the police officers to line up like that. That's when she heard the slow, steady hoofbeats approach. As soon as he came face to face with the source of the party's abrupt end. Unicorn had a body as big as Bang Magatoss, as strong as it to boot. His coat was a dark khaki shade with a black bus style kite remain, and tail was set off his thick key mark, a pair of cross pole axes with a glint of their blades. Aside from a far more elaborate suit jacket and a pultates, he also wore several medals and a large badge to denote that this was the chief of Pinefield Police Department. His last distinguishing characteristic was that his horn was far pointier than other unicorns, which meant he was forged primarily for active combat, like some of the Royal Guardian Army. His navy blue eyes scoured the room with an intent gaze as he walked forward with a strong stride towards Buckler. Captain Hellbear, sir! 
But that Buckler says he cut their hose together with a certain expression. Lieutenant Buckler, may I inquire why all these patrolling officers are disestablished instead of outside scaring the streets for any reverence of possible lawbreakers? He stamped with a cross look on his face. Sir, a grateful citizen who is known around the area as a party player, Anne Mary Mecker, took it upon herself to formally welcome our department with an impromptu housewarming celebration. I was here to prevent this celebration from escalating to dangerous levels. Yes, never forbid. This party might go from a party to a hootin' nanny. And heaven forbid it goes on an all-night rave. The celebration itself would have ended soon, and we would be all returning to our posts. So he responded. I was made to command the officer even more cross. What? A travesty of justice, that's what it is! Who would dare an SCA party in after hours where most of the fellows would be out in full force? I demand to know who this pony is! Every pony merely pointed to Huff and Pinkie Pie. All he could do was smile and wave as he blew a party fever. Halberd's eyes became more focused and solid as he walked towards the smiling pink pony and looked down at her. So, you're the one who's wasting the time of my officers with some silly party. That's who you're supposed to pay, he said sharply. My name is Pinkie Pie, and I do this outwarming party for all these nice police officers. Why are you He responded with pep. She's Pinkie Pie. Unless you respond with anything less? The captain had to with a snort. <laughs> Do you have any idea how many villains, lawbreakers, and other assorted scum will terrorize and destroy and completely blanket this peaceful town in a wave of chaos, anarchy, and destruction? We'll be coming in just because you decided to give these brave boys who would give their lives for these civilians a stupid party? <laughs> Beast, he'll stop. Oh, oh, I'm guessing you. Five? No, eight, eight. No, 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 no. I got a big assassin. Do I get a prize? However, his pace was reaching a boiling point as his team grated in rage. Pinky no know that and looked out with concern. Aww, look at you. You're all Mr. Grumpy McGurkum. Here, I have a balloon to cheer you up. Squiggle grabbed the balloon off the floor and tossed it at his face. The captain responded by grabbing the balloon with his dark green mascara. Everyone looked on as the balloon was squeezed tightly by such psychic force somehow clunky in the middle. The balloon exploded in a loud bang that made everyone jump. Halbert was fizzed as his eyes darted around the room, took notice of all the balloons, and used a powerful magic pulse to burst them all into continuous bang. As soon as he finished, he turned his head to Buckgore. We took Make sure that all active forces that were at this diversion be given a 25% bit to return to this month. Participate or to be on patrol at all times when out in the field! He snapped at her. This caused all the officers to gasp with shock. One hard stare to get even rival fire size from Halbeard silenced him as he walked outside. The two officers that arrived with him sneered at them before accompanying them. Saying sadly, Buckler looked at Pinkie Pie. Sorry, my dear. I hope we'll see each other again soon under a more positive departure. He finally tells her as he walked outside, turning around head and moving her head forward to signal the officers to leave. All the officers turned to glare at Pinky as he gulped a sticky wave. The foreign-born officers left grumbling angry at their pay cut. The Pinefield native ones quickly glistened up, sighed sadly with their tails hung low as they took exit, knowing Pinky isn't to blame. The other party goers just looked sad and followed suit. Soon, the skinkier corner was empty, except for Pinkie Pie and Bunch Cake. Pinkie said sadly as a frizzled mane and tail went straight, looked down at the assorted burst balloons on the floor. She fell a hoof on her shoulder. They carried her lips to see the bright, bespectacled smile that cakes his niece. The leg get you down, Pinkie. The how can't it help her is not known for his social skills. That's why Lieutenant Buckler is often the one who deals with everyone, so it's much nicer. This isn't your fault. You just wanted to bring them smiles. I'm sorry to get over this. Piggy's mane quickly frizzled back and gave her friend a little smile. I guess I better clean you up before going to bed. You said Earth Point shook her head. No, no, no. You had a long way to go from Vene. I'll clean up a little way your cannon. Just take your bells to some upstairs. Relax. Piggy gave her friend another smile as he grabbed and hoisted her legs on her back. Skipped upstairs. Punt clutches the can as his harness and pulls the can away. As he did so, she went to the stairs and whispered, Welcome back. Piggy went to her room and locked it. 
turning the lantern on, she placed a salad bags on a table nearby. She sighed relief. It wasn't easy for Merritt Well to quickly slip up to the roof, unlock the closed window of her room, get undressed, and refer to Pinkie Pie. Hits up her salad bags, managed to find her surplus party can as she hides away from the cakes, stashed away where she could use it later, somehow get it down to the floor without any noise so she could make her entrance. She did it without a problem, and no one was the wiser. The party itself may have ended on a sour note, but she wanted to meet every single police officer, and that was her plan all the time. The party itself being a cover for her to recon and learn the names of every new officer so Meridwell would be raved with a rare stroke of tactical genius, and even she was scared by it. The more foreign officers joining in, the better it was for her to record them in her memory. She smiled as he placed Lieutenant Buckler in all of my super duper nice list. Francis she puts Captain Halbert in her personal meeting pants list alongside certain Griffin. So, Pinky, I think this is time for the party cave. Hey, get out of as he realizes it, two hours before daybreak. She greeted the case when she finally all freshened up, and was followed by looking for a gummy, going down to Twilight to find out how the police department came about. As she put down her metal quill and furled up her metal to-do list, she blew down the lantern's light and hopped to the bed, pulled out the sheets over her. Pretty soon, she was snoring peacefully away. Elizabeth Meredewell. Right along.